In an urban society, everything connects. Each person's needs are fed by the skills of many others. Our lives are woven together in a fabric. But the connections that make society strong also make it vulnerable. to do. Just imagine living down there. Take you an hour to get to the nearest booze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. But the air is lovely. <sighs> you know, I love it this time of year. The spring coming on. You know, see the leaves just coming out on that bush over there? What are you looking at? I'm trying to make out where our house is. I had a pair of binoculars. See, it's good lights at United Ground. Saturday, look. March 20, with the news, John Barker. No, what time is it? There's been further fighting in Iran. No, I've done scores of them. This is the civil war there. Oh, honestly. Yeah, come out here for a drive. We're surrounded by all this countryside, and all you can think about is football. It's not all I can think about. Oh, stop it. Honestly, you've got no consideration at all sometimes. I think you can do what you like. Where are you going? There you are. Peace offering. Not much smell to it, though. Mm, it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to bring good luck, innit? <laughs> what they say? I wonder if it'll bring me in. <laughs> this film, shot secretly by a West German television crew on Tuesday, shows one of the Soviet convoys on the move in northern Iran. The convoys were first spotted by United States satellites on Monday, moving across three of the mountain passes leading from the Soviet Union. The Soviet foreign minister has defended the incursions and has accused the United States of deliberately prompting last week's coup in Iran. Speaking on his arrival in Vienna, Mr. Gromyko claims the Soviet vehicles were responding to appeals from a legitimate government. Are you being serious? Of course I'm being serious. I'm going to be more serious. He went on to allow American covert activities in Iran in the period immediately preceding the coup as destabilizing. Are you sure? The United States of the danger Definitely. I'm normally as regular as cop work. Anyway, what if I am? It's not the end of the world, is it? And now a look at programmes later this evening on BBC One. And don't forget number 24 today. What? I said don't forget number 24 today. You're going to run your ear in with them things on all time, you know. Honestly, Jimmy, you want your bloody 
something else seen to? I think he wants something else seen to as well. Don't blame me, it's not my fault. Whose fault is it then, you daft boy? Don't go blaming it all on Ruth, Jimmy. That's not fair. It's irrelevant who's to blame now. No, no. Point is, what are you going to do about it? We're going to get married. What for? Because we want to, what do you think? You don't have to, you know, Jimmy. I wouldn't want you thinking we were pushing you into it. Nobody's pushing us into out. It's what we want, we've decided. I suppose you've talked about an abortion. Of course we have. But neither of us want that. When I get married and have a baby. Mum, what's that mean? Abortion? Michael! Never mind what it means. You'll get on with your game. It's nothing to do with you. I'm thinking of getting engaged anyway. So it doesn't make much difference, really. It just brought it forward a bit, that's all. And you know what you're doing, Jimmy. It's a hell of a time to be starting a family in the middle of a recession. What are you doing with that? I'm not hurting it. Ah, oh, Jimmy's getting married. Are you? I might be. Why? Well, it's a bit sudden, isn't it? You're not even engaged. How do you know? Anyway, it's not to do you, so keep your nose out. Are you getting married in a church or in a registry office? Alison? What's an abortion? Michael, I've told you once. Oh, so that's it. I'll give you a good hiding, lad, if you don't learn to keep your mouth shut. What for? I haven't done anything yet. Are you going to shut up about it? I hope you two are both satisfied now. What are you blaming me for? I haven't done anything wrong. Now 7.30, Douglas Barton with tonight's headlines. The United no, States has hinted it may send troops to the Middle East if the Russians don't move their forces out of Iran. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister has joined the chorus mm -hmm. of Western leaders calling for immediate withdrawal and has spoken of a serious mm -hmm. threat to world peace. Four people were killed today on the M6 motorway in Staffordshire mm -hmm. when their car was in collision with a heavy tanker. The accident happened at the junction with... <laughs> Get on all right. No, I can't see why not. They're ever so nice. Just wish we were meeting in different circumstances, that's all. Making it sound like a funeral. Well, it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Indian Ocean put on high alert. Ought to have been a happy occasion. It States is a happy occasion. This morning's report came well, well, I'm happy anyway. I must say, it's brought out a very determined streak Washington in you, as this. There's been a serious incident involving a United States warship in the waters off the coast of Iran. No further details are given in the story attributed to the paper's defence correspondent. However, one rumour being heard increasingly in the capital this morning says the vessel is a US submarine that has disappeared whilst on routine patrol in the area. Coming Can you hear what I said, I seem to confirm that something very serious is happening. A Pentagon spokesman has refused to be drawn one way or the other on the crisis, carrying all reporters' questions. Oh. Oh. Do come. Do come. Hello. 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 Mom, uh, Mrs. Kemp. Mr. Kemp. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. and Mrs. Kemp. Oh. Hello. Hello again. How do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Kemp. Oh, do go through. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. BBC News at 8 o'clock. 
The Soviet Union has protested strongly to the United States about what it calls dangerous provocations by American warships in the Gulf of Oman yesterday. This follows an incident in which serious damage was caused to the Soviet cruiser Kirov when she was in collision with the U.S. destroyer Callahan. It's a bit of a state, but it's got possibilities. I have that door stripped down. All this paper off and the walls white. Well, there's about 16 layers on here. Ah, my mother and dad'll help us. I'm sure they will. My dad will give us hand as well. Be glad of something to do. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just thinking of his space when my mother said we could borrow his redundancy money. Oh, don't. <laughs> we'll go fancying a trip to Bermuda on it. <laughs> Looks like being Blackpool again. Oh dear. I like the gardens. I think it's lovely for children to have somewhere to play. I really feel like we build an aviary down there. Oh, you and your birds. Makes you feel funny though, doesn't it? What do you mean? Lots of only home, being married, having children. You have to put years on you, don't it? Don't be silly. Be lovely. I just know it will. Yeah. coast of Iran when she sank last Tuesday with a loss of all hands. After paying tribute to her 127 officers and men, the president went on to say that he held the Soviet Union solely responsible for their deaths and for the vessel's disappearance. The unprovoked attack on our submarine and the move into Iran are the actions of a reckless and warlike power. I have to warn the Soviets in the clearest possible terms that they risk taking us to the brink of an armed confrontation with incalculable consequences for all mankind. Britain has emergency plans for war. If central government should ever fail, power can be transferred instead to a system of local officials dispersed across the country. In an urban district like Sheffield, there is already a designated wartime controller. He's the city's peacetime chief executive. If it should suddenly become necessary, he can be given full powers of internal government. When or if this happens depends on the crisis itself. The United States government has been forced, reluctantly, to take action to safeguard what it believes are legitimate Western interests in the Middle East. This administration has therefore resolved to send units of its rapid deployment force, the U.S. Central Command, into western Iran. We are confident that the Soviet Union will take note of our resolve and will desist from its present perilous course of action. Mary, 
I want you to contact the following people and have them in my office in ten minutes' time. I don't care what they're doing, they're to drop in and get here right away. Is that clear? Right. You got a pencil? OK. Alan Bolton. George Cox. Roger Fisher. Susan Russell. Yes, administration. Tony Barnes. Roy Chamberlain. Is it for a Wednesday, isn't it? I think it was Christmas. And what about the food situation? What have we got? And what about fire? What else is there? Corned beef. Hope it's not from Argentina. Okay, what about supplies to the first aid post? At all? Well, that's not going to get us very far, is it? What? Well, I'm sure I don't know if I'm honest. We've heard nothing about emergency powers as yet. Anyway, don't make a song and dance about it. Just get on with it. Don't tell anybody you don't have to, eh? Okay. of the United States 10th Airborne Division, which parachuted into western Iran yesterday, have taken up defensive positions near Isfahan, designed, according to the spokesman, to block any possible move towards the oil fields in the Persian Gulf. Squadrons of American B-52 bombers have been arriving at U.S. bases in Turkey right, since late on We're Tuesday right. evening, together with three AWACS early warning aircraft. It's believed that they'll be used in a supporting role to the Middle East Task Force. All right, John. The 84th Airborne Division has also been placed on a state of combat readiness and is said to be able to... Come to give me a hand, then? No, gents. Done enough for one day. I'm knackered. Not too knackered to be going out, though, I see. It's different, isn't it? Anyway, I need a break and be down at house every night this week. How's it coming on? Not too bad. Just trying to get living room and bedroom finished before we move in. Says, will you take some flowers down when you're finished? Third since tea time. Aye. Where are they going to? Fittingly, I suppose. Why don't you pop down to WH Smith's and buy yourself an aircraft spotter's book? You start a new orbit, make a change from gardening. You can laugh, but there's something going on, I'm telling you. There'll be something going on tonight when I've had a few pints. Don't be going mad. You haven't only got yourself to think about now, you know. Why not? Might as well enjoy myself while I'm single. Not that long to go now, you know. You could be right there. Spokesman, the warhead. Hey, I'm watching that. Right. 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 Aboard two giant Antonov transport planes late yesterday afternoon and were immediately moved under cover into temporary hangars. See that? What do you think about Far East? Niggas and turns it over. Far East? Wow, what's going on there? Iran. The Americans have just said Russian. Iran. That's not the Far East, yet. That's the Middle East. China. Hong Kong. That's the Far East. So what? It's far enough. 
for it. It's a bit of myself. Scarborough and Skegness. Skeggy? They entered the building they're the ones with me toenails growing on the way. Never mind that rubbish. What about these two birds to ace to this term? The next hour or so. NATO's position on the United States action in sending its task force... That dragon looks getting serious. Well, it's not weak enough about it, is there? Might as well enjoy ourselves whilst we can. I know, but don't it scare you what it might lead to? Well, it bloody scares me. There's no way we can do about it, is there? I'll tell you one thing, if the bomb does drop, I want to be pissed out of my mind and straight underneath it when it happens. ...from which neither side can back down. Arriving here in Brussels a short time ago, NATO's Secretary-General said he regretted the Soviet attack. Come on, you miserable bugger, it's all his family responsibilities. You're acting like a married man already. You're not belong now, you know. Well, you might as well make the best of it once you can, haven't you? Whether the Imagine these two birds up there. ...strengthens the divisions within NATO is something we shall know in a few hours' time. When Can't the full council of ministers Come meets on, in the might be the last chance you'll get. Anyway, if we are going to cop it, might as well go out with a bang, that's what I'm saying. Can't be many better ways of going, I don't suppose. <laughs> Blow the bottom <laughs> job. <laughs> and we've just heard that the Prime Minister has issued a message of support for the United States government. The statement, just released from Downing Street, condemns what it calls reckless Soviet actions, which can only worsen an already grave situation. To the Direct Technical Services. Please let me know what fuel stocks are currently held in each depot. Please ensure that tanks are kept topped up and that no fuel is used except for essential works only. Soviet government as yet to the United States ultimatum delivered to Moscow last night. The American note calls for joint withdrawal of all US and Soviet forces from Iran by noon on Sunday. However, NATO observers in West Germany have reported increasing buildups of Warsaw Pact troops and vehicles at points along the central frontier this morning. The Ministry of Defense has announced it's sending more troops to Europe to reinforce the British commitment to NATO. The first contingents left RAF Bryce Norton this morning. The day has been marked by a number of demonstrations up and down the country reflecting support for and against the government's decision to reinforce Europe. Although most of these passed off without incident, police made a number of arrests for disorderly conduct at rallies in the North and Midlands. The government has taken control of British Airways and all cross-channel ferries. They say it's a temporary step to help move troops to Europe. Thousands are stranded at Heathrow and Gatwick. And the Royal Navy is to guard the North Sea oil rigs. The MOD says it's a prudent precautionary measure. This time, they are playing with, at best, the destruction of life as we know it. And at worst, total annihilation. You cannot win a nuclear war! Suppose the Russians win this war. What exactly would they be winning? What would they have conquered? Well, I'll tell you. All major centers of population and industry will have been destroyed. Industry? What industry? We ain't got no industry in Sheffield! Yes, and if the money hadn't... If the money hadn't... Yeah! If the money hadn't been spent on nuclear weapons, you would have built up industry. Get back to bloody Russia! Yeah. Who would have put money into welfare? Who would have found all 
alternative sources of energy. Industry. Industry will have been destroyed. Oil refineries will have been destroyed. All our water would have been polluted. The soil would have been irradiated. Farm stock would be dead, diseased or dying. The Russians would have conquered a course of a country. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Since the expiry of the American ultimatum to the Soviet Union at noon yesterday, there have been intense diplomatic efforts to mediate between the two countries. There is still no information from Iran itself. No news teams have been allowed in or out of the country since phone and telex links were cut on Friday evening. Questioned in the House this morning, the Foreign Secretary said he had no definite news to report and that it would be unhelpful to speculate in the absence of any hard information from the area. tinned food, sugar, and other storable items, which is causing shortages in some areas. The spokesman for the main supermarket chain said that panic buying is unnecessary. Fuel shortages are hindering resupply in some areas, but overall there is no shortage of stocks. They urge the public to calm down. 40p? That's scandalous. There were only 26p last week. We can always shop somewhere else, you know, if we're not satisfied. Honestly, there's a national emergency going on, and all you can think about is lining your pockets. Look, nobody's forcing you to buy them. Put them back on shelves if you don't want them. Yes, I will. I'd sooner start first. Excuse me, love. They've started fighting, Mum. Who has? The Americans and the Russians. It's just been on the news. Your dad says you've got to come home now. Come on. Hey, you have paid for them things! In response to today's news of the outbreak of hostilities between vessels of the United States and Soviet navies, a special session of Parliament has this evening passed an Emergency Powers Act. There'll be a special announcement at the end of this bulletin, and details will be given then of how this affects you. The Prime Minister is expected to address the nation on the international crisis later this evening. A statement issued earlier from Downing Street said the government is optimistic that a peaceful, negotiated settlement to the conflict is at hand. In the meantime, the public is urged to remain calm and to continue normally. Doing a moonlight flit then? No, we're going over to our Jackson Lincolnshire, so I think, get sorted out. 
I reckon we should be safer over there. Carol, will you stop messing about there and come inside the house and do something to help? Yeah. Sure, we'll be safe anywhere as far as I can see. Oh, I don't know. We have a better chance of surviving in country, really, haven't we? I mean, we're our Jack lives his own here. Road houses and a pub. I don't think they're going to bomb that, are they? Well, I think that's about it, Ron. Ah! Carol! Have you turned that gas off? Well, I hope so. We don't want the whole street blowing up while you're away. Come on, Carol. Spot! I'm coming! We can't find our spot. Well, he was here a minute ago, wasn't he? Have you looked inside the house? I looked upstairs, along the street, next door neighbour's garden. Now look. Ridiculous all this. Spot! Spot! Come on! I'll be here in a minute. I know we will be. Spot! Come on! Come on, look. But well, where Spot. is it? Come on, look. We're going with we we our team here. Come on. Come on, tell it. Mom! Spot! I feel a right fool. Nothing will happen. Come on, we're not standing about here all day waiting for a bloody dog. Get in. Doctor, oh, we can't Mom. leave him. Spot! Carol, get in. Oh, get in. Spot! Spot! Come on, get in, you bloody the thing. Russians have cut the road links into and out of West Berlin. See you then, Bill. Air communications with the city have apparently That's also been set. Details are still coming in, but it seems an American army convoy bound for West Berlin has been turned back at Helmstedt on the East German border. Unconfirmed reports say the Russians have offered a safe passage out of the city to the US, British and French garrisons. It's not clear if this move is connected with yesterday's riots in East Germany. We'll bring you more details on the story as soon as we have them. Sutton here. Yes, I understand. Do I have to go right away? No? When? Yes, I see. Local authorities have been given the power to suspend certain peacetime functions and to requisition premises and materials for civil defence purposes. A government spokesman said that this was a precautionary move only. It was not a cause for alarm. and the West Country. The police are urging motorists not to travel unless absolutely necessary, and if it is essential, to use only minor roads and leave motorways and intercity trunk routes clear for official traffic. A full list of designated essential service routes is posted outside your local authority headquarters. It includes the M1, M18, A63, and A629. Trusted relatives in Lincoln. Not this way, you're not. Essential service on only this road. You have to find another route, I'm afraid. Well, that's bloody ridiculous. You can't just stop people like that. Uh, excuse me. Where are you going? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, love. You can't go there. Yeah. You just can't what? stop people like that. I'll tell you what. Try Junction 3530 of the M1. They've opened up the hard shoulder for single line traffic only. You can imagine what it'd be like to chop the block. If I were you, I'd go home and sit tight. That's what they're advising people to do.
There is growing evidence overnight from scientists and observers in many countries that there have been two nuclear explosions in the Middle East. There's no official confirmation of what has happened, and the Foreign Office in London... I've put half a dozen in. You can fetch some more if you like. The we know that'll be plenty. Well, tell him to improvise, then. The British government right. Clive, you don't think anything's really going down, do you? No, it's just a precaution, that's all. You had a shave this morning. Oh, you should never have said you'd do it. You don't have to. You won't get the sack if you refuse. Look, Marjorie, it's difficult for me as well, you know. I don't want to go and leave you and the children. Well, then why are you going? Well, Sunday's got to pick up the pieces. If... Why didn't you say something before if you were worried about it? I never said anything when I went away on those courses. Sutton here. Unconfirmed reports from Islamabad yes, in half an hour's time. London this morning suggest I should be getting off now if I were you. The roads should be getting busy. Well, use your common sense, ma'am. According to the report, Why should I know? Marjorie, leave that. I'll ring you later. What? The evacuation of the area is also reported. Yes. Yes. It is imperative, while there is still time left, that the TUC call a general strike in protest against this disaster which faces us all. That's what will destroy this country! There is still time to avert disaster. If we act resolutely and show both the Russians and the Americans that we will have no choice with their war hungry. What about the Falklands? What about the Falklands? Listen, mate, there's nobody more patriotic than I am. I've been trying to get us out of the common market for bloody years. But first... What's it like in there? Oh, it's a bit primitive. Take a look. Ah, right, well, we'll get it organised. Where the hell is everybody? There's only half of them here. You know Steve, the information officer. Where the hell is everybody? Jeff just rang in, says his car's broken down. Well, that's not well, true. How many are missing? About ten. Oh, I'll get on the phone, tell him I want to meet him immediately. Right. Which is my desk? It's straight through. Mind your head. Don't see any sign of the emergency committee, do you? I mean, all those bloody councillors are like... <laughs> Ah, well, they're not getting paid for this, I don't know. Well, this is it. It's the best I could do. Dr. Tolbert, regional health authority. How do you do? How are things going? We're doing our best. In the last few days, emergency headquarters like this have been hastily improvised up and down the country in the basements of town halls and civic centres. The time has now come to make everything ready for you and your family in case an air attack happens. This does not mean that war is bound to come, but there is a risk of this, and we must all be prepared for it. When you hear the attack warning, you and your family must take cover at once. Do not stay out of doors. If you are caught in the open, lie down. Was it, uh... 
If you leave your home, your local authority may take it over for homeless families. And if you move, the authorities in the new place will not help you with food, accommodation, or other essentials. You are better off in your own home. Stay there. Anyone dies while you are kept in your fallout room, move the body to another room in the house. Label the body with name and address and cover it as tightly as possible in polythene, paper, sheets or blankets. If, however, you have had a body in the house for more than five days and if it is safe to go outside, then you should bury the body for the time being in a trench or cover it with earth and mark the spot of the burial. for a week or two. Yeah. I've had her in work for you and telling me not coming in. Oh, there's anybody there? There only one or two in yesterday. Well, there's not before. Can't get anything now. Well, I instead. I think we ought to be getting the rest of the things down to the cellar now. to make everything ready for you and your family in case an air attack happens. This does not mean that war is about to come, but there is a risk of that, and we must all be prepared. When you hear the attack warning, you and your family must take cover at once. Do not stay out of doors. Hello, Counter. This is Sheffield District. Testing. One, two, three, four. Please report my signal. Over. Well, whose bloody responsibility is it, then? We've all got families. Look, just get down here. There's nine other people. Look, I've got a serious public order problem. I need at least an extra six PSUs. Yeah, but when? Look, I'm using traffic wardens already. I don't know how many men All right, then I'll let Many of these officers have had no training at all. Some have learned of their emergency role only in the last few days. And almost all are unsure of their exact duties. I suppose you ought to take this one off as well. Yeah, but it could get scratched to pieces. It's only just been painted, Bill. Well, it's better than getting blown to pieces, isn't it? What's it going to spill, then? I'm going to be late. Oh, I don't know. What did it sound telling? I can't remember whether it said schools were closed or not. Oh, they are closed. said so on the news. We're going to stay home for the show. Of course I am. said they were sending notes out to all the players. Oh, no, it's a tie. Great. We had an history test this morning. And the clothes covered or cabinet. Look down to curbs and see if they've got any food left. Like what? A portable radio and spare battery. Tin stuff, bring what you can, and take me purse. Are you going to build one of these in here? Of a mad dead body is. I want to know something more definite, Bill, before we start ripping this place to pieces. Can I help you? Yeah, yeah. That would be great. Strong disinfectant and toilet it. paper. They like going camping. Candles and matches. The most widespread danger is fallout. 
fallout is dust that is sucked up from the ground by the explosion. Fallout can kill. It's 8.30 a.m., 3.30 in the morning in Washington. Over the past four days, neither the president nor his senior staff will have had more than a few hours rest. This is when they may be asleep. This is when Western response will be slowest. As we expected, nearly all the supermarket shelves are empty, but we've managed to get the warehouses controlled by the police. As yet, we haven't located all the root vegetable clumps on local farms, but stocks of sugar, wheat, flour and rice are quite good. Attack warning. Attack warning. Attack warning. Is it for real? Attack warning. It's for bloody real. Is it? Right, get to your stations. Come on, get yourself. Get that generator going. Shut the doors. As soon as you can, every single scrap of information you've got on casualties, but I must have that. Well, get your heads down. Look, we can't sell you any timber. You'll have to see bosses about it. It's a bloody joinery, not a timber yard. You can't just have a piece like that. Go and get a titty sign or something. Come on, quick, get down!
it easy. Don't bother me. Don't let anybody get in there. Ah, oh, that's the girl. Well done. What up? Come on along now. Put the lights. Come on along, boys. Oh, uh, well done, guys. How long can you keep that going? <laughs> First aid kit, quickly. Okay. We've lost county again, I think. <laughs> Aerials must have blown. You're on the roof. Switch the lights up in the corridor when you get there. Can we raise any districts? Oh, what about radio ants? Can we improvise an aerial? Oh, well, we'll try. We've Sit got to do some, something quick. Some white in the street. Get the ants for first aid kit. It's on this shelf at the back. It's all blocked out here. I can't shift the thing. How is it? Come on, find this cur first aid kit. Forget the first aid kit. Bring me something to cover him up with. Casualty, Is yeah. there anything you can do? Over. Give me another bin liner. <laughs> what is your radiac what, reading? What, what about the depot? Uh... I repeat, what is your radiac reading? Okay. Over. <laughs> Hundreds. It's too high. You've got well, to well, get well, your men well, undercover. Can you get us? Can you get us? Can you get us through? To the county central headquarters. Well, over. Last try, guess them. Can you patch us through? Hello? Over. Hello? Stop hey, tweet. Are you receiving? Over. Well, I think. Have we you heard anything from them? them? The court, uh, never mind about that. Ask you about casualties. Here. 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 We've lost them. What about Hildebrand and Stocksbridge? Something from Hildebrand and Stocksbridge. Not too bad. Windows blown in and structural damage, but Windows not too bad. Windows blown in that far out. Ask him where that Jesus last one was. Jesus Christ. Ask him where that last one was. Switch that thing off, will you, Gordon? <coughs> the first fallout dust settles on Sheffield. It's an hour and 25 minutes after the attack. An explosion on the ground at Crewe has sucked up this debris and made it radioactive. The wind has blown it here. This level of attack has broken most of the windows in Britain. Many roofs are open to the sky. Some of the lethal dust gets in. In these early stages, the symptoms of radiation sickness and the symptoms of panic are identical. You all right, Ruth? Ruth? I couldn't help Ruth. it. Ruth. It just came on. Oh, right. Don't worry about it, love. It's not your fault. We've all got it. I know, but it's I'm so shock. ashamed. Yes, I know. It's just the shock. Messing the bed it's the my shock, age. isn't it, Gordon? It's like being a little baby again. Light up. Ruth, come and help my king, Grandma. 
robes. Be careful with that, love. It, you don't know how long it's going to have to last us. Oh, don't just sit there and do something. <laughs> I'll go and look for him. Where's he come? No, you, you stop here, love. Oh, still. I'll only be out a few minutes. No, Rita, stop here, love. No, Please, I'll no, go look I've for him. No, I've got to come. No. Oh, come on, help me. All right. <coughs> oh, my God. Michael. Michael. for two days. Well, who the hell else have you tried? Well, send another motorcycle. There are no roads left. All the people here will be dead already. It's completely flattened. Round here, 50% will still be alive, but, but here, they're as good as dead already. They've probably received a lethal dose. What about here? Oh, It'd be pretty heavy there. If the wind's still blowing up from the uh, west southwest, is isn't direct line from crew. Oh, 800 rads, 1,000, difficult to say. Depends what sort of cover they've got, of course. If they've got a decent cellar, we'll put it on the radio. Oh, right. There's no way of getting anything Look, out. If I don't According to the release list. list. Yeah. Yes, I'll pass the message on. No I expect it to do. Well, you got road and grand you know you know vehicle. I've got some list of vehicles. Listen, I need some wagons. Hey, that's all. I've got a message from Riverland Valley Police. They've managed to get through to beat Chief Workstepper. They've got some vehicles on the road, but they're nearly out of fuel. Well, what the bloody hell have they been doing with it all? They didn't tell me. They just said they want to know whether they can get some more. And I've got no food. Oh, God. Any chance of getting through to Karen? Look, I've got that. Just let me get on with it, OK? Here you are, Mother. Something to eat for you. Better leave her. The rest will do her good. Well, at least it won't go cold. Ruth. Ruth, love. Come on, love. You'll have to eat something. But you'll have to, love. It's not just you now, you know. The baby needs some food as well. <laughs> I don't care about this baby anymore. Oh, Ruth. I wish mean, she was dead. Don't say things like that. There's love. no point. There's no point with Jimmy dead. But you don't know. He is. He is. He dead, he is. I know he is. Don't be sad. Oh, oh, we're breathing in all this radiation. All the time, my baby. Oh, my oh, baby. Oh, my baby. I've made it I know it safe somewhere. Oh, oh I, wish, I wish I were dead. 
She was me. On this lot, you could go back for yards and yards. Try it again, Gordon. Still nothing coming through. It must be blocked further up. How much stuff do you think's on top of us? Off the town hall, I should think. Well, when will you be able to get to us? Can't get lifting gear. What about the army? What about the military? No We've not heard from Cathy as yet. If you don't release really some food soon, we'll oh, never get things under control. Well, you try getting through to them. It's bloody awful. I've got starving mobs in shallow Ecclesfield. Drunk Look, it's not our thing. decision anyway. It's up to Zorn to authorise the release of buffer stocks and then it becomes a county decision. We can't get through to well, county. What are we going to do? Let them starve? <coughs> Look, even if we did have the authority well, to feed we're it. on our own. You've got the authority. But bloody time you did you something with it. it. Look, what's the point of wasting food on people who are going to die anyway? I agree with Clive. The food stocks are not going to last long. A lot of people just didn't stock up. How could they? The bloody shops were empty. And now they're coming out of the shelters. I know it sounds callous, but I think we should hang on to the little food we've got. And I need that food to force people to work. Go and make us a cup of tea, Shannon. Well, go make me your stuff and not your bloody wife, you know. You've better got a fail. That's for your own Look, I don't care how much trouble they're causing, we're not sending our men in there with radiation as high as that. Look, I know that. But what's the point? They're all going to die on that patch anyway. Bill, just get, get, get me a drink. Please, a drink. I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can find it. I won't, I won't be, be long.
Two. Night, night or day? Night, I think. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm losing track. I'm not sure whether it's night or day anymore. Hanging in the atmosphere, the clouds of debris shut out the sun's heat and light. Across large areas of the northern hemisphere, it starts to get dark. It starts to get cold. In the centres of large land masses like America or Russia, the temperature drop may be severe, as much as 25 degrees centigrade. Even in Britain, within days of the attack, it could fall to freezing or below for long, dark periods. Thank you. 
will be met by force. So I invite you to disperse and go back to your homes. One round CS gas, face of cake. The entire peacetime resources of the British Health Service, even if they survived, would be unable to cope with the effects of even the single bomb that's hit Sheffield. By this time, without drugs, water or bandages, without electricity or medical support facilities, there is virtually no way a doctor can exercise his skill. As a source of help or comfort, he's little better equipped than the nearest survivor. We've no choice, as far as I can see. Can't we get any food from outside? <laughs> Where from? We've told Candy and everybody's in the same boat, aren't they? What about the broiler? Trouble is, we can't contact Rockley or Aresbrook. God knows what's happened there. Probably been raided. What do you think, Doctor? We'll have to cut their rations. I've worked it out there. A thousand calories for manual workers and 500 for the rest. 500? 500? That wouldn't keep a flea alive. Should we be bothering to keep anybody alive if they can't work? A lot of people are going to die anyway. It's back to survival of the fittest, I suppose. What is that in terms of food, then, 500 calories? <coughs> I don't know. A few slices of bread, some soup, a lamb chop, a treacle tart, a few pints of beer. Look, you must have an empty factory somewhere. No, you look! 
I've got thousands of homeless bloody people up there walking around and I've got enough on with them without being worried about bloody criminals. Well, you're going to have to find somewhere to put them, aren't you? Well, I don't know. Look, shoot the buggers. I don't care. Can't we get a water tank to prove it? Stop. Oh, Christ, Steve. This should have been sorted out days ago, yeah. Well, what about the rest centres? Can we not tell them to make their way there? No, no, there'd be no point. Look, they'd be overrun anyway. Certainly not. What about tents? I don't care. Any tents we could now. use? What? Tents? How the hell should I know? Look, if you want to know about tents, go and phone the bloody Boy Scouts. Oh, piss off, will you? You're not the only one under pressure. I bloody no! You sort it! <laughs> That's and what the hell are you doing about digging us out? That's what I'd like to know. Empty hours, eh? Shut up! What choice have we got? We were all ring. What else can we do, eh? We're starving. Two bodies in the cellar, sir. Man and a woman. We've been dead long. Man's had his head battered in. Who will like that woman? Oh, yeah. We're in. Out. We ain't done yeah. nothing. Number two. Oh, we got the cellar boots. We're only after a bit of food. Check the house. And search the body. Bag of crisps. What flavour are they? Well, Doctor. They fucking would be. I hate them. Come on. Money has had no meaning since the attack. The only viable currency is food, given as reward for work or withheld as punishment. In the grim economics of the aftermath, there are two harsh realities. A survivor who can work gets more food than one who can't, and the more who die, the more food is left for the rest. A fag meal. I used to love a fag after a meal. You've got all to swap. I've got some scotch.
Detention camps are improvised to cope with looters. Their numbers are growing. a growing exodus from cities in search of food. It's July. The countryside is cold and full of unknown radiation hazards. By now, five to six weeks after the attack, deaths from the effects of fallout are approaching their peak. down there. George Langley. Yes, what do you want? You've been designated for temporary residence. I'm having no strangers coming to live here. Look, you've no choice in the matter. It's law under the new emergency I regulations. I don't care what it is. This is my house and I'm having no strangers in it. Look, according to my records, you've got four spare rooms. Ah, kitchen, no bathroom. Stop and spare and all. They can't just come here and walk into people's houses. It's not right. Look, we're not here to argue the rights and wrongs of the matter. Besides, right, it's One, bloody two, dangerous. Three, they might three, bring all sorts of diseases four. with them. Come on, in you go. They might be contaminated. In you go. Well, look at him. Look at him. That's enough. Oi, look at him. Go on. Go on, in go. You go. 
Right, number 19. The whole lot of you. Gone! Ruth, isn't it? And Bob, Jimmy's mate. We met once or twice, remember? Came to our last Christmas do at work. Where is he? Is he with you? Have you seen him? safe to eat? I don't know. How can you tell? It's got a thick coat. That should have protected it. Uh, you breathe it in there, don't you? It should be all right. Sheep don't die of cold. It must be radiation. You'd be able to taste it if it were contaminated. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, we've no choice, have we? Unless we want to starve to death. Take some with me. Where? City. There's nothing there. North. Dales. Doesn't really matter, does it? It's all the same. Try and skin it. Keep me warm. Collecting this diminished first harvest is now literally a matter of life and death.
electronic fuel shortages mean that this could be one of the last times tractors and combine harvesters are used in Britain. first winter. The stresses of hypothermia, epidemic and radiation fall heavily on the very young and the old. Their protective layers of flesh are thinner. In the first few winters, many of the young and old disappear from Britain.
Ruth. Ruth. Work. 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 Oh. what some of those skeletons were. There was the skeleton of... a cat. A cat's skeleton. The skeleton of... a chicken. A chicken's skeleton. The skeleton of... a bird. A bird's skeleton. Seaton and Coney. Gears her! Gears her! There, El Tuzzle Brian! Best stand off us, I'll get! Gears her! Where is Doc Bat? Come on, us. Where? Come on! Us place. Gazzle Spike. Shut and Coney, eh? Come on! Come on, Shut and Coney! Come on, come on, come on. Come back here with that. Hey, no. Come back. Come back. Come on, 
Come on! 